Hi, I'm Andy from Soundcraft. Welcome to another video on the VI series. In this video, we're going to look at the Vistonic system that we use on all of the VI series. And we're going to have a look at how that works. So if I use the uh, example of this screen here, Vistonics is really a, a touch screen with knobs mounted on the top of the screen. Actual knobs mounted on the glass. So we've got encoders that as you turn them will actually move parameters. We've also got a little button next to each knob. So there's a switch and an encoder. And Vistonics basically works to give you an analog style display of your channel strip in your console. So if you imagine a strip passing down the whole touchscreen here onto the fader section and all the way down to your fader. So I've got my fader, my solo, my on off button. I've got a rotary control here, which I can select to be gain, pan, other parameters. And then as I go up my screen, that strip continues as it would on an analog desk. Accessing the parameters is done by touching the screen at the top section, and then I will operate controls open out on the lower section of the screen. It's arranged exactly as an analog strip would be. So if you go into the top of the input section, you have input controls. Moving down, we have equalizer. Moving below that, we have dynamics, gate compressor. In this case, we have a, a BSS dynamic EQ that's actually being assigned to this channel. We have that on the channel strip. Below that, we have auxiliary sends. So we have 16 auxiliary sends on one page. And then we have a second page. This, in this case, it's group buses. It could also be auxiliaries. We have up to another 16 buses accessible on that page. And then finally, at the bottom of the channel strip, we have things like the pan control, the routing to your stereo bus, your center bus, whether it's LCR panning. And you also get control over your direct output where that is in the signal point uh, in the channel flow, what the patch point for the direct out is. And then we also have the channel insert point, which in this case has got our BSS dynamic EQ inserted. So I'm going to go back up to the top of the channel strip again and have a closer look at some of those controls that we have in there. So if we go into the input stage here, the whole of this screen is now filled with parameters just for this channel's input section. Over here on the left, we have input one, input two. So we have a choice of two alternative input patches for this one channel on the console. And you can select down here, input one patch and input two patch. So input one would be your main input. Input two could be a playback input from a multi-track recording, or it could be a spare microphone, for example. In order to patch something into those inputs, I press my button here, which opens up my patching screen. On the patching screen, I get a choice of all of the input-output connectors in the whole of this console system. So that will be a combination of local I.O., where we have line inputs, and out, uh, AES inputs, some microphone inputs, and some Dante inputs arranged on different pages. I also have MADI inputs locally, which have their own separate screen. So I've got two MADI cards in this particular console. I've got a remote stage box. Again, here I've got two remote stage boxes, so I've got two tabs there, 64 inputs on each stage box. And I use just unpatch and patch by touching the screen here. And then finally, I've got my built-in lexicon effects units. The outputs of those effects appear on the patch screen here, so I can patch them into the console as effects returns. So my patching is very easy to do. I've got patching for input one. I've got another patch for input two. Moving along, then, for my currently patched input, which in this case is a stage box microphone input, I've got my remote controlled preamp gain here, which is the stage box's preamp with a pad switch. I've also got a digital trim here, which will be there, whichever type of input we have coming in. There's a low cut filter inside the stage box as well, pre the analog to digital converter, which I can switch in and out. In the digital domain in the channel strip, I then have my low cut and my high cut filters, which I can switch in and out. And you can see this is an example of the icon based display that we use, where we use very recognizable types of um, images to show what those controls are doing. In this case, it's a filter, and I can clearly see that I'm cutting off the low end 
using those displays. Over here I have a screen which allows me to select input channels to, to link into stereo and on the bottom row I have some further controls, my phantom power switching for my mic preamp, my phase reversal for my mic input, the patching we've already looked at and we have a button here channel label, there's my QWERTY keyboard, I can label the long label which is at the bottom of the screen here and I can label the short label which is the one on the fader panel down here. I can choose colour coding for my channel labels over here as well. And finally over here we have an input delay which is up to 100 milliseconds of delay time with a coarse and a fine control. So that's my input section of the, of the strip. Below that my equaliser, it's arranged as a four band parametric, each band can be switched in or out, the whole equaliser can be switched in or out. Very clear to see what these controls are doing, I have the cut and boost on the bottom control here, on the upper control is the frequency so I can see my frequency dial here and then my bandwidth here. Bandwidth can either be shown in octaves or it can be in a Q factor display that can be switched globally. Moving down then my next section is my dynamic section so every VI console has a, a gate which can be switched into a DSA mode and it has a duck mode as well so I can use the sidechain input here which I can patch from anywhere on the console and use that as my key for my gate or my ducker. On the bottom row we have a compressor and a limiter. Very easy to use compressor with the threshold attack release ratio and makeup gain and then a, a hard limiter with attack and release and the threshold. On this channel I've also assigned the BSS DPR901 dynamic equaliser. Again a four band unit, each band can be switched in or out. We've got frequency and bandwidth, we've got the, the gain threshold and we've got the reduction or expansion The auxiliary send section we've already looked at, um, 16 level controls for aux sends and another 16 controls which in this case are set up as group buses. And at the bottom of the channel strip we have our pan control, our routing to left right bus, centre bus, LCR panning mode. We have a ability to set up a vmix auto mixing group so what I can do here is I can select each channel into one or two or in this case up to four groups which can make them part of an auto mixing group. If I do that I now have a vmix control with a weight and a calibration control and what that allows me to do is set up a group of microphones which will have automatic gain mixing between the channels. On the bottom section finally we have the insert point in and out. We have a signal point allowing us to go pre or post equaliser with the insert point or pre or post fader. Here I can select what my insert device actually is so I can actually choose in this case my BSS Dynamic EQ but I could also choose a lexicon effects unit up to eight of those on this console or if I want to use an external in this case MADI patch I can connect any equipment up externally to the console using send and return points that I can define here and that will give me my external insert point. Over here the direct output, level control, signal point and a patch point which allows us to see where is the direct output going to come out and I can access all of my analog and digital I.O. points on the console from that patching screen. So very powerful parameter control very clear display. We use icons on the overview display which means you can very quickly look across the whole console and see even how many AUX sends are actually sending without having to necessarily go in and have a look at all of these screens. So this gives you a very very quick and easy overview of every parameter on the console. The Vistonics itself uses these knobs and these are, this is the only console that has this system where there is a control knob actually situated right on top of the class. The benefit of that is that where you're actually moving the control, you're actually getting the visual feedback right next to the control. Unlike on some other systems where you're turning a control and looking somewhere else to see the display.
So that's the Vistonics overview that we've got on all of the VI consoles. Um, thanks for watching. For more details, have a look on the soundcroft.com website at the VI console product pages. You'll be able to find an interactive demo on there of the Vistonics system and have a closer look.